how are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. I cannot complain. Um, thank you for having me. Yes. Thank you for coming on and, you know, taking the time. Of course. Of course. I'm just, uh, you know, just enjoying, enjoying the day. So I figured why not, you know? <laughs> so let's get into it. Um, again, guys, thank you so much for coming in. Um, for another episode of Genius Indie Talks. I'm your host tonight, Danielle Meeks. My co-host, Aisha, she is not in with us, but she will be watching and she'll be back next week. Um, tonight, I have a special guest and this person is just, it's amazing. He's amazing. Um, just his journey that he's been on. And I mean, there's no further introduction, but Miles. Um, so let, let's let's get into it, Miles. So you're you're a new yorker first of all you're from brooklyn born and raised it's really loud outside so apologies in advance no, listen, <laughs> Speaking of. I'm, I'm used to it it's, it's new york right <laughs> um so just like talk about how do you feel that growing up in brooklyn and how does your music you know contribute to i guess like the cultural aspect of brooklyn or in a new york way well it's interesting because growing up up in Brooklyn, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean like you could grow up in like a decent area, not so good area, mm -hmm. um, in terms of like, you know, how you know the activities. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't say it necessarily uh, influences my music. And mm -hmm. out maybe outside of when I'm creating the songs, I have a tendency to like freestyle the melodies first. Okay, and I think that kind of comes from like having like a rap background, even though my music is pop. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll have a tendency to kind of just freestyle, like whatever comes first, whatever feels right, and kind of like let that contribute to like where the song is going. Okay, see that's that's still Brooklyn influence, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, um, and when was the moment that you knew that you wanted to take music seriously or how did you begin your musical journey? Well, for me, it started, I mean, I always wanted to sing. Mm -hmm. And then I started playing guitar around like eight ish. And that was when I decided, hey, let me like try this outside. Like I have a couple of friends, like little kids, like, oh, like let's let's go like perform outside, make money, and, like get candy or something. And so I started doing that and um I found level performing and I've been doing it ever since. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of performing, so then you went into doing like street performing. Yeah. So so it started it started with supermarkets and mm -hmm. then it transitioned into performing on the trains. Um, and I would just keep meeting people, you know, like, oh, like you should perform here. Or like, oh, like I got an idea for like, like you should, you should come here to this space and mm -hmm. help me really network myself, you know, at a young age. Mm -hmm. Did you ever have those moments of like, dang, like, I don't know how long I can do this for when it came to like street performing or when were you, when did, like, was there a moment you felt like, when, when am I going to get my big break? Street performing kind of, it's it's my roots so like i definitely have had those moments of like just concern mm -hmm. of like oh like is this my life uh but <laughs> overall because i like performing i just feel like it's a stepping stone it's a reminder to like kind of like just remember where you come from no matter what i've done you know over the, over the years like i think it's it's nice to come back to my roots mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's, that's true. And speaking of performing, so you had a very phenomenal performance of Dirty Diana on Club Quarantine Radio uh, with Tory Lanez back when COVID yes. was doing its thing. Yeah, um, that's crazy times. Yes. So talk about like how how was that experience and how you being selected to, you know, go on live and because I've seen the video, like I watched the live, you had a lot of, you had a lot of praises, like you've had a lot of praises from Timbaland, you had a lot of people were in it. So just like talk about like what was going through your brain and how did you get the opportunity to go on live? I just remember being like on the live watching uh -huh. and hearing him like, like, oh, we're about to start the talent show, blah, blah, blah. I'm kind of like sitting in like a situation where I am now. Yeah. I have my guitar behind me, but it was like literally like right next to me. Mm. And I'm like, okay, like I'm just gonna wait for the first person to go up. And then afterwards I'm gonna like, you know, just kind of like mentally prep. I'm spamming the comments like as much as I can. Yeah. Uh, and then as I'm like having these thoughts, it just says, oh, you're, you're loading. Like like the save the loading screen. And I'm like, oh, I grab my guitar. I'm like kind of like <laughs> getting like in performer position. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was, um, it was surreal because 
I remember at the time too, my, my phone was like super broken. Um, so my ringer, like it was, I couldn't turn my ringer off. So after the, like after the fact, I was like kind of like trying to sleep. Ding, 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 ding. Like my phone is like literally blowing up. Just going it, was, it was insane. And let's talk about your, your um, song choice. So what made you want to do Dirty Diana? Funny enough, I there might still be a video somewhere on my page where it's like I do Poison. Mm -hmm. It's like an acoustic version of Poison. But um, I wanted to do that for it alive. And I had like I was practicing all day, and I was like, "Oh, this is what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be so dope." Um, and something just told me, like when I was there, I was like, "Oh, just do something you know really well." Yeah. You know, like like I I, I was already nervous out of my mind. Tory Tory Lane's talking about there's like 116,000 people watching or something like that. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna do something I grew up on. Yeah. And see what happens. And I'm I'm glad I did their Yeah. Because like, you and you sound exactly like. Michael Jackson, like in the I, I like, wouldn't say that. No, I wouldn't say that. like if you close your if you close your mind, like close your ears, close your eyes, and you just look like it's very similar. Thank you. Very, no, I mean obviously, like Mike's a, a huge influence on my mm -hmm. career, on um, my mm -hmm. my vocal style, you know. So so I think that it definitely came to my aid for that for that mm -hmm. uh, performance. Okay. And let's talk about now the after effect of club quarantine. So you had a lot of people reaching out to you. You had some in the likes of Diddy. Um, like I said, Timbaland was in a comment. Timbaland was a person in a comment saying that you got something really special. Um, but you ended up meeting and like, you know, collaborating with Neo. Yes, so, yes, Neo. One of, the, one of my favorites, actually. Yeah. Um. <laughs> He's he's uh he's such a good he's really good at what he does. Mm -hmm. like, like to to have like to be in sessions with him and actually like learn from somebody I grew up on. Mm -hmm. It 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 just it makes things that haven't clicked that didn't click yeah make a lot more sense. Oh. You know. So I'm I've always been like extremely like grateful to just be in his presence because him as an artist as a person yeah. He's like, it's like, you see, what you see is what you get. Like, literally, like, his brand is him. Yeah. You know? So I'm, I, I'm always, like, just, every time I'm, in, like, I'm around him, I'm just trying to ask questions. I'm probably annoying him. But it's cool, because I, I need to know. Like, yeah, like, no, no, I, no. I have to ask the questions. Yeah, listen, close mouth, don't get fed. So <laughs> what, was there, like, a, a particular thing? I know you said Neo was your favorite, but what made you go the route with Neo versus somebody else that has... Mm -hmm been reaching out to you well so neo's one of like one of my like i would say top four top five favorites um mm -hmm. i think what made me go that direction was the fact that he's been around for so mm -hmm. long um and since we have similar influences that that like we grew up on which is why we have similar sounding mm -hmm. vocals uh mm -hmm. in some ways uh I feel like it would it would be a good help to understand the direction I need to go in as an artist, or more so even just seeing outside the box and having an open mind for other spaces I can be in as an artist. Yeah, is there like one particular thing that he's told you, or one piece of advice that like has stuck with you, or it stood out for you that he said? It's strange because it, not anything that's like quotable. It's more like it was more so just watching and like being in the studio and seeing the way he he acts and the way he like he um he takes his time with his records like i remember like one session we had in london where everybody was like there's like a lot of talking going on and like a lot of ideas coming back and forth melodies being like flown across the room and he's kind of just there like on his phone just nothing and i'm like what's going on then he just walks into the booth and he knocks the entire record out oh wow Oh. And so it's like, it was a reminder to like, kind of like be confident in what I do mm -hmm. and be, 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 be sure in like the choices you take. And you don't have to like, like, it's nice to collaborate, but mm -hmm. it's also like just being mindful, you know, being mindful of like what, what you, I'm trying to think how to explain this, being mindful of what, being confident in what you do. Yeah. That's, that's the best way I could explain yeah. it. Yeah. And now. Now you are signed to his production company, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. So how was that as far as, because you weren't signed before, so 
how did you know that you were making the correct deal? Was there anything that like he went over that you maybe had questions about that you're just like, I'm not too sure what, like, what does this mean? Right. When it came to I mean, the deal specifically? Well, there's, there's always like, you're always trying, like, like, you're always trying to figure out the situation with, like, well, like, do I keep my mask here? Like, what's yeah. going on? Um, the way it works for me is a little bit, uh, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of what I should say and what I shouldn't say. Yeah, I mean, but, I, don't, um, I don't want you to, I don't No, want yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess it took a long time to get to get it done. Actually. Yeah. Um, so, so it was because, you know, there was, like, a lot of back and forth, just making sure it was the right deal for me yeah. as an artist. Which is so important because because there's so many you know situations that can you know if you kind of just jump the gun and you go too fast you kind of like you can you can screw yourself yeah um, so I was definitely just constantly aware and having to open discussions with the lawyers and stuff just okay. trying to figure out all right this is not layman's terms can you make this into layman's terms yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but at, like at, at the end of the day, everything ended up working yeah. out and yes, thank you. Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> great. So now let's uh talk about you know, um, your latest single, yes, stuck in so, paradise, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it first of all, it is amazing, thank you, stuck in paradise, love the song. It gives me that, like, you know, it's very summery, it's it's even like all your songs just listen to your music it's like you, it puts you in a good mood a good mood and i feel like that's something that you know the way the world is right now we need to be in um yeah. <laughs> can you just like talk about like the preparation or what led you to create stuck in paradise well i remember i was in la um mm -hmm. shout out to, to sam pound he's this super sick uh producer i ran into one day and he was like yo like gotta work like I have a I have a studio set about here um so I go to the studio and I remember I was writing this song I mean he shows me the beat mm -hmm. and I just remember thinking like I wanted to write I was in the mood to like write for someone else kind of so I was like what if I like took an approach I hear the guitar I'm like what if I took like a like what if I, if I was writing this for like a Shawn Mendes or somebody mm -hmm. um and how would that sound and that's so that's where it that's where the direction I took first Okay. Um, but as time, time passed and I was like creating the record, um, I kind of just realized, eh, and he, 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 Sam said the same thing. He was like, this, this, this sounds like you, like this, mm -hmm. this should be for you. Uh, uh, I guess the inspiration behind it was, I just remember the sunset and it was like this pinkish bluish, like colorful sky. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, this really like, this is really like a moment where you're like, I want to feel like peace. Like, I want to feel like. Like, I want this feel-good moment to be put in a yeah. song. So that was, like, my, my biggest, like, influence behind it. Okay. Now, how is it when you're collaborating with other, like, producers and creating a, a song? Like, do you feel like sometimes you may clash? Or is it just, like, smooth sailing? Like, how does that work for you? It depends. I feel like sometimes, like, there's people... It depends on on you just have to understand each other it, at the end of the day it has to do with understanding people on a like, human mm -hmm. level and like the mm -hmm. social cues and whatnot like for me like i have a habit of like i really enjoy creating uh, like the melodies and that part of the song myself because i just i, I know like there's certain places i know where i want to go um i think i think so and sometimes i feel like that can clash because sometimes other people want to contribute to those ideas mm -hmm. But I feel like regardless, we can all come together and still create like a beautiful, a beautiful body of work. But um, it, it just sometimes it takes uh, it takes bumping heads sometimes. You know, you don't, you also don't want yes men in the room. Like yeah. you want someone to be like, oh, I don't know about that. Like, what if we did this? You know, uh, so it's it's always gonna be a, a back and forth, but you have to find a like a happy medium. Yeah. How do you? You know when you have a yes man versus someone who's like very oh, actually i do think that that's a good idea i feel like for me it when i'm i'm like scattered brain when i'm creating so mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll have like a bunch of melodies i'm like i don't know about this one which one which like which one should i do and like i feel like when someone's kind of just like saying like oh yeah yeah that one's cool that one's also cool like hey like whichever way you, yeah whichever way you want to go like those are those can be dope and then i realize like uh i don't like you're not you're not giving me anything mm -hmm. like 
it goes back to like you're being you're in a creative space where you want people to bounce ideas off of each other yeah and okay so your performances um you seem to you know captivate your audiences you performed at radio city you performed i mean uh, yeah radio city msg um now how do you prepare when you have a live show especially going from you know you were doing street performances to club quarantine to now you're in bigger venues so it's a lot more people and a lot more yeah. eyes so how do, how do you prepare for that and how do you not like you know let that psych you out i try to be mindful well first i pray yeah. <laughs> gotta pray amen um it helps me a lot uh just to kind of like calm the mind mm -hmm. and I, I think just going back to like you said like performing growing up performing on the trains and whatnot it's helped me the new york crowd isn't an easy crowd you know yeah. so to, to be able to, to capture them oh yeah. what's up aji to, to to be able to capture them um and and actually win win their yeah. applause yeah it, it gives me a like a newfound confidence and like if i this is this is like next level apollo like mm -hmm. singing on a train car everyone's coming from work they don't want to hear it they yeah hear it, i promise you um i guess i guess trying it my best same thing with the Tory Lanez live mm -hmm. to bring the things that I've learned from performing on the trains into real life settings mm -hmm. and and finding a balance because there's a huge difference. But at the end of the day, if I'm gonna if I'm singing my heart out for the, the maybe 30 people in the train cart, I'm just gonna bring that to whatever stage I'm on. Okay. And what is something that you hope that your audience take away from your performances? I would just want want them to feel like how how, how like authentic like, like what an authentic place it's coming from mm -hmm. and, and that I think we live in a world where like not a lot of people are like like their their strong suit isn't necessarily being a live performer and I kind of want to showcase hey like this is where I come from mm -hmm. like even though like I'm really grateful for social media to kind of like be taking like taking taking me into an, a, a good direction right now mm -hmm. that's not like where my roots are my roots are performing and mm -hmm. i want them to actively see that like oh like this is raw talent you know all right and i want to backtrack a little um because you just say that your roots are performing so did you go to like a performing art school like what type of training did you have when it came to performing the trains <laughs> <laughs> like, yes, that's train. my point is that i've been performing outside and being a street performer busker train performer my whole life that's are my roots and mm -hmm. and it's helped me so much as a musician you know like i i didn't i went to school in like williamsburg in brooklyn not a performing arts space just mm -hmm. you know regular just a, um, yeah yeah just regular not like not regular but like just regular school you know school, yeah, uh, just public regular school. High school, yeah. <laughs> um and i've learned a lot just by being around music thankfully mm -hmm. that i can kind of keep up with like the little music theory things and whatnot I, and i've studied on my own time too okay but, uh, that's good that's very important too right and but the trains have been my upbringing my whole my whole life okay is there like any like memorable moment um or um experience from your musical journey that you can just like remember that was just so significant to you say that one more time was there like any uh, particular like memorable moment or significant experience that you can remember um, along with like on the way of your musical journey? I have this one funny story. I was, <laughs> my dad's gonna kill me. I was maybe 16, 17 at the time. Mm -hmm. And I met this guy on the train and he was like, hey, uh, like I like, like I do music, like I'm like a, I want to like I, I want to consider being a manager. Um, really dope, really cool guy actually. Uh, um, but you know, so he's saying all these things, and I've heard it all before because I've been doing the train yeah. thing forever. And I'm like, whatever. And he's like, yeah, I know these people out in Atlanta. Like we we could go. I'm like, so I'm like kind of like egging it on. Like, okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, and then and before I know it, like you like book the ticket to go to like Atlanta, and I'm out there and I meet little Yachty, little Palm, Quavo. Well. Quavo like walked past the room. He stared. He saw a bunch of guys, and he, he walked uh -huh. away. But it was like it was a lot. It was a it was a crazy experience for like a 16, 17 year old. And then I remember not having my ID and getting, 
getting stuck at the airport and I'm texting my, and I, to, I told my dad that I was staying at my friend's house. for. The oh, wait. So your dad didn't know you were going to Atlanta at all. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, okay. And so, and so, so I text my brother and I'm like, my big brother, and I'm like, hey, like, I'm like actually in Atlanta right now. And he's like, what? Um, and I'm like, I'm stuck. Thankfully, they let me on and I got home like fast enough. But my, my dad's probably going to see this and ask me a question. <laughs> but that's probably one of my favorite experiences because it's just like just a kid just giving it his all yeah. for the thing. He yeah, loves. no. And that's something that you could like now. I mean, that you're older, you can look back on and like laugh at it. But I can just only imagine like, OK, how you're coming up with a story to tell your parents that you're going away for a weekend like now what if what if your dad called your friends that the that the house you were staying at or came to visit then what you know yeah but, the world but may that's... never know because, like, <laughs> I made it back. <laughs> and as someone as diverse as you how do you see your music evolving um it's interesting like i'm and <clears throat> It's a really good question because I've been questioning what direction I want to go musically. Mm -hmm. I know I want all my music to be feel good music. Yes. Um, and so part of that is trying to figure out, is there a way that I could kind of like local grab, grab a more local crowd as mm -hmm. I'm working my way up, as opposed to having these, what I would consider big, like pop songs that would, would take a lot more traction and a lot more push to, to get to like, what's like Z100 or like the, like the bigger stations and whatnot. Um, so I'm, I'm currently in, in the works of like working on where I'm going sonically as an artist. Okay. And is there a particular, like anyone in particular that you would love to work with or collaborate with? Right now? Um, good question. I like Lucky Day a lot. Okay. Victoria Monet. We love, we love Lucky Day over here. We love yeah, Lucky Day. yeah, same. He, during right before the, the whole uh, Tory Lanez thing happened, I was going on a bunch of lives, and I had the one. I did. I sang "Roll Some More" on on one of the lives, and I posted it. He like commented like a little lucky. Uh, oh, like the the, the the char yeah. 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 Oh, that's <laughs> cool. Oh, yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I think he's probably one of my favorite artists right now. And I'm sure when I get off this live, I'm I'm gonna be like, oh, there's so many other artists that like mm -hmm. that I've been listening to, mm -hmm. but um, he's one that comes to mind for sure. Okay. Um, can you talk about uh, any upcoming projects that you may have? I'm right now. I'm kind of just working on pushing my record, Young Love, that came out of February, mm -hmm. and the second Paradise record, and seeing how far I could push these. Um, and if if anything. I would like to continue to release singles because okay. I think that's the direction the world's going in. I, I grew up on like a lot of Bruno, MJ, uh, Weekend, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And the, their backgrounds are usually like more like, oh, let's be like, let's be mysterious and drop like one album and disappear for five years and drop again. And it's like, that's not the world we live in anymore though. So yeah. I can't, I can't kind of, that's like an old school logic to have. And I kind of have to take a different direction. So I want to see what happens if I'm like, just, pumping out music okay. so that if anything that would be my next direction okay when can we i know you just released um stuck in paradise yes go Co check that out if you haven't. yes go check it out all, all all platforms <laughs> platforms um now oh can we get into american idol sure okay. what what okay. would you like to know see season 22 how 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 was the experience what made you decide you want to audition for american idol Anybody was, advice for anybody who may it, want to join American Idol? Okay. Um, I think that I just wanted to change a shift mm -hmm. in my life, and I didn't know mm -hmm. what that shift was going to be. Okay. Um, but I'm glad that I did take the direction of like trying out mm -hmm. because oh, I've always wanted to like mm -hmm. test out like a TV show kind of experience, and um, I met a lot of really dope, not only like talents and performers but like really really genuine human beings mm -hmm. um like just sweet and they all everyone has a story everyone's been through something you know so there's there's a level of humility and like kind of like very home-rooted energy going on yeah so um 
I would say, I would suggest that if that's something you'd like to do, to just go for it. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can be, be competitive, but also be mindful that like you're living in a present moment and to and, and enjoy what's happening in each of those present moments. And, and with it being so competitive, do you ever witness like anybody trying to like, you know, snake you or, you know, oh. Oh, in the back. all the time really it's, like, it's not like in your face it's not in your face like you wouldn't like see it like like you wouldn't like be able to be like oh like they did this yeah it's kind of like it's when it goes back to kind of being socially aware and like kind of like understanding like your environment mm -hmm. um it's, it's like just sly sly moments sly like facial expressions maybe like someone not reaching back out like it's, it's a lot of little things where it's like mm -hmm. you know the difference between when you're meeting someone that's being really genuine with you and there were a lot of genuine people there as opposed to someone that's mind and goal was just like i want to be the next american idol and it's like well you got to be a better person first you know like you got you got there, there's steps to this you don't just go from here you know so um yeah but once again, I really do suggest it for anybody that's feeling like they want, they're in need for like a shift or a little change in their life, something that could like kind of add some spark. I would say put a like a fire under my butt to kind of like push content. Okay. Um, and which is why I feel like a lot of things right now on my social media are kind of like picking up. I was just <laughs> pushing and pushing and pushing. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Okay. <laughs> was it like, how was the, from the point from where you signed up and that to the point where you was able to audition? Like, was it such a like a long process? Did you have to stand outside for days? Like, what was well, that like? Well, it's different now. I feel like back in the day when it was like the TV, the yeah. initial TV yeah. show thing, when the internet wasn't a thing, it was very like, oh, like, you know, there's going to be like 300 people, 400 people in the room in the big line, like waiting to be, go in front of the judges. Mm. And now we're kind of like, they reach out, you know, like the internet's a thing. So like they see viral moments with incredible things all across the world mm -hmm. and they're just like shoot you like a slide dm like hey like VIP, you know um so so yeah it's a it's a the, the process is so different now. Mm -hmm. um which is why i think like anyone should sign up right now one of my close friends uh abby carter she's she's in like the top five i believe um so it's like it's, it's really nice to watch their experience and like when you're coming from like a loving place and you actually like want to see other people work. Uh -huh. it's like it's beautiful like you're just like oh that's my friend like go 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 like um so yeah like going back to it like i just i think anybody should uh anyone that really wants to just grow as a person and mm -hmm. artist should, should, should take that take that bet on themselves yeah and i feel like your story in particular is like so inspiring um you know we we talked about you going from street performer to you being signed and having a publisher deal with neo to american idol um and it's, it's so like i said it's very inspiring but what advice would you have for anybody who who may be in the same shoes as you or same start as you street performing and they just feel like they want to give up or they just don't know what route or, or what they should do i would say don't bank on being motivated mm -hmm. you know kind of just bank on being consistent because i think i have a lot of my best kind of like runs in general as a as in my career mm -hmm. when i'm just doing everything i can to be a consistent consistently no matter how high the quality is or how low the quality is like just pumping out music or like just whatever, whatever pertains to you. Like if you need to go do a bunch of shows just to get your name out there, just do it. You know, if you need to post a bunch of videos, get your name out there, just do it. If you need to just release a bunch of music, just, just make it happen. No matter, you can't let anything kind of like get in your way. You kind of just have to go full throttle. All right. And with social media being such a big influence um, today of how, you know, your reach, like what your reach is, um, do you have like a set amount of videos that you may post or like a week or um, a day, what you try to do? It's weird. Um, I'm like banking right now on, on the reels. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's doing like the reels. I feel like Instagram and TikTok are kind of competing a little bit mm -hmm. right now. Um, mm -hmm. so reels are really, the numbers are going up. The algorithm really wants to see more people on it. Mm -hmm. So I'll post maybe, I'll try to go anywhere from three to five okay. a week. 
you okay. know so it's like a, a decent amount but not so much that you're kind of like over you know, over it. pushing yourself yeah um and i think you got to find something that's within like something that works for you so that you're not doing things that don't make sense or is like out of the way that feel uncomfortable and like it has to be convenient like for me i sing i sing all the time mm. like it's, it's fine so like i could do a singing video and whatever revolves around singing the content will be related to it yeah you know? so i think that's all you should do is just find something that works for you that you can be really consistent on okay um and what goals do we have like what goals do you have for yourself and then within the next let's say year by next year that you're gonna say um i I'm, I'm miles or I'm going to be doing this, this, this. Right now, I just, I'm, I'm such a strong believer in slow growth right now, mm -hmm. um, as, as opposed to like big jumps in my career. Mm -hmm. um, that would be great. That'd be great. But uh, I, let's see, one of my goals is to get to like, maybe like 10,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Okay. Um, okay. And it's, it's a lot of little things like that, where it's like, just taking baby steps and, and seeing where, where that can get you because viral is, is microwave. Yeah. You know, you kind of you want, you want the slow roast and you want the people that are really going to be behind you. Um, so I just want, I just want the people who are really going to be active supporters in my career. Yeah. And that, that comes from slow growth. And I like how you, I like how you said that, um, being viral is like microwave so it's like something that's like quick like turnover um but but slow and steady wins the race you know mm -hmm. 100 percent. someone just said that too yes <laughs> and miles i know you do have to go and i appreciate you for coming back on of course, you know, of course. instagram try to play me um <laughs> but you know let the people know where they can follow you where they can find you any performances that you may have upcoming mm -hmm. that well, we can expect from you there's a I have a performance on the 15th in Jersey. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name. It's not coming to mind. Is this like an open to the public type of it's event? It's open to the public. It's okay. open to the public. What's okay. the name? Ah, Paradise. So Paradise is in Jersey. I'll put more of the details on my story. So follow me at Miles Music underscore on Instagram and TikTok. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be releasing a lot more music. So be on the lookout for that. And for the people that have been here since quarantine, mm. thank you so much. Quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. Thank you so much. You've been the real ones, and a lot more music is coming, and I'm 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 grateful for everyone who's been supporting me thus far. Yes, and we're grateful for you, Miles. We're grateful for having you on, and you know, just you spreading your music, you know, giving your story, and just being an influence to somebody else who may be going through the same thing and coming out. Thank so, you so much. Mark. So we thank you. Um, so I won't hold you any longer because I know no you have worries. to. Run. Okay. But guys, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Genius Indie Talks. I'm your girl, Danielle Meeks. Aisha will be with us back next week. And this is Miles. So check him out. Follow him on all social media. Please. Purchase his music. Don't just play it. Purchase it on all DSPs, you know, Apple Store. Purchase. Okay. And if you're in New so York, come to my shows. If you're in New York, come to the shows. He has a show on the 15th. We said Club Paradise in yeah. Jersey. He's going to put the details in his story. So watch out for that. And you guys enjoy your evening. Miles, thank you so much. Thank you.